<coughs> I've just done this drawing. I've taken quite a bit of time with the design of it. It's so simple to do with a with a stick and some some drawing ink, some waterproof black ink. But the when you're putting a path in like this and trees by the side, you need to make one side less dominant. Otherwise, you're competing. You're, you're dividing the picture into two halves. So I've put the weight on the right. I'm going to put the lights, if I can remember, from this side, so that she, the shadows on this what will be a snow scene will will come down here and up there, um, and some some shadow cast from bigger tree off the picture coming down here maybe to show the the lie of the land. My figures looks like as if they're leaning over, but I think it gives a bit of um, dynamism to it, a bit of bit of movement. So it's a, a not very nice day again today. It's a typical late November, late autumn, and that's the sort of sky I'm going to do. We haven't had any snow yet, but I'm going to paint snow I'm hoping that this one's going to be good enough to do as an email, as a, a greeting to all those people that we can send email Christmas and seasonal greetings to. So, wintry, but I won't put any Christmas trees or anything like that in it. So, I'll wet the paper all over. I hope it's all nice and dry. More or less. It does take quite a time to, to dry. You wouldn't think so, even if you use a hairdryer on it. Look, it's still picking up some of the, the ink. I don't want it too, too wet. Right, bit of uh, burnt sienna. Here's my palette. Uh, lemon yellow, filthy dirty from Payne's Grey. I'll give it a bit of a, a, bit of a clean up. So the lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, Payne's Grey and burnt sienna. I'll give my palette a little bit of a clean up in the middle. Right. Make sure you've always got a piece of cloth, toweling, something, just to take the excess moisture off your brush. So we'll put in some nice strong light here, a bit of alizarin in there. So this is where I'm, I've got my light established, so the darker clouds are going to, such as they will be, will be... Uh, on the left. So, so I'm reflecting the sky colours in in the uh, in the snow. And so we'll put in some nice darker clouds now, some Payne's grey, a bit of ultramarine, a nice kind of bit of lizard in there. So this is where the uh, the weight of the cloud is going to come. Keep it, keep it out of there now. We're nice and dark here now. Just a little bit over there, the little clouds coming towards the horizon there. Uh, so let's just put in a bit of a faint wash of that colour on the snow. Just showing them there. Right, I'll just um, stretch the paper a bit. For those that prefer working on Buckingford, Taylor Buckingford, it's a good paper, £140. Jackson Art are doing some good deals at the moment, good half price deals, 60% off, which is not half. I've looked at it, but I'm quite happy using, using this cheaper paper. But Buckingford for £140 weight, 
16 by 10, 16 by 12s and 14 by 10s are good sizes and they're very good prices. Right, uh, I'm going to dry that off a little bit. To create distance in this one, so below sky colours, a bit of blue. Remember that, make sure it's more blue than grey. Let's put in some Surrey Hills over here. Bit of snow there. Uh, just stiffen that up a little bit. Sienna, in with that blue. some darker green using burnt sienna and ultramarine just putting some distant trees on this horizon. I've tried to show, so they leave some white there to show some shadow and white snow, snow in the shadow so just, just give another plane to this background. I can probably do a bit more than that. When the paper's wet, you, you, you can't put really wet paint on it, otherwise it just bleeds into it. So thicken up your mix quite considerably, then it will register. Oh. I'm almost putting neat paint there, very soft. Right, that'll do it. We'll ruin it. Uh, give that a try. Paint ruins the drawing, doesn't it, somewhat? It's because it, it, it uh, kills the contrast between the black and the white. <coughs> um, now I want to put in some, some foliage going up these trees like ivy and stuff. So I'm going to use, I think this is an Edward Wesson mix, using burnt umber, Payne's grey and lemon yellow. So we'll just put that in, it's quite a warm mix, we'll have that coming up there. Almost an olive green really. Trying to show sort of ivy. And some evergreen type foliage that will always be be there. But also it, it's to kill some of this uh, the, the, the contrast on the uh, the black ink. There's something very exciting about using black ink on white paper, but if you use a stick, you can't be too accurate. Now, I'm going to put some leaves on the, well not leaves, but some, some twigs and what's left of the autumn leaves going into winter. So, but no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be careful here. Don't wanna overdo this. But I want this to look impressionist.
more blue in that mix of I'm mixing a burnt sienna and uh, ultramarine here, so it's just a bit darker there. But I'm just dry brushing this. I don't want it to be strong. This can be slightly stronger because it's on the, the dominant side. So let's uh, get that in. Now I reckon if I dry that I could go over that with the blue. Some blue, uh, but I'll mix with a bit of um, alizarin. Should, I hope, that dry brush give an impression of some foliage behind, like the, uh, uh, I'm trying to create an impression now of there being something attached to these trees, but behind them, like the, the around the corner, the, the back side of the leaves and twigs and stuff. Also, some some distance, of course. Right. Okay. Now. There's not a lot more I'm going to do with that other than put these, these cast shadows in from this light. So with my hike, I'm going to use uh, light red and ultramarine, but on the blue side. So we can have this coming down here. And these shadows here cast from the grasses. It'll yeah, come down there, that one's coming over there, and then I'll just shape the shape here, the shape. Down there. So we could have some trees coming down. Down there. Just smudge that a little bit. And then with my rigger, I'll just put in some shadow where the uh, feet have gone. Uh, I still forget the shadows cast by the figures. Sign it and I'll put it in a mount and we'll see how we've done. Just put in a bit of shadow cast. Yeah. Any I missed? Right. Good enough for a Christmas card. Oops, let's get that over there.
Oh, there we are. But uh, let's bring my camera up a bit so we can see what we've done a bit here. Zoom in. So really, although I didn't show you the drawing, I've done several of those. You shall see, you can do that yourself. But I've just shown you the paint. The painting is simple. Once, well, provided you've got a lightness of touch with a dry brush on those trees. I'm not going to do any more to those. I don't think they need it. I'm quite happy with that. That figure, whoops, that figure in the distance needs probably just a little, just a little bit, a bit more bulk on it. It's just a little bit, or let's just make it a little bit, a bit bigger, stronger. Oh, that's a bit better. So there we are, I'll, I'll zoom out and then you can have another look. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed that. Goodbye.